Today's lesson is nine six graphs of polar equations. Now I do need to say as a heads up that this will be homework on, but will not be required on any assessment. Um, and you'll probably see why in a little bit. Examples of graph like this, I believe it's called Lamassons. Um, do not speak French, sorry. Are these where they kind of look like they could almost be circles, but some have an indent and some have even a loop de loop, a little bit inside there, right? And that is where is A over B is less than one. If A and B equal one, we kind of get the peach look, I guess. Apple, peach, I don't know. And then one over A, um, one less than A over B less than two. So between one and two, it's pretty close. And if A over B is greater than or equal to two, where A is this constant and b is the plus or minus b cosine of theta or c right both of them need to be positive now don't worry about these patterns we're just going to kind of see a couple we'll graph one or two and it'll be pretty straightforward we can have rose curves and rose petals yep seems pretty complicated and we can have circles and lemniscates lemniscates i don't remember how it's pronounced sorry Moving to the next slide, okay. Now, first graph, r equals three. These will clearly already be done um, because of how much time it would take and how precise I need to be to do these, or it won't be for all the lessons. Now, notice we've got the points zero, pi six, pi third, pi half. We're not doing every nice value, right? Um, so some of the ones that I graphed are actually not on there, right? We aren't necessarily doing the fourth. Um, so that we can just do even amount of points and so that they are evenly spaced. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, about 12 points, which is quite a bit. Right? We got this table here, 12 points. Um, and yeah, R is 3 for all of them. So just clearly I did 3. And if we connect the dots, we'll get a circle. I think my goal was to use um, an actual circle here and show you it would be something like that. So graphs off just a little bit, but fairly close to accurate. Now, this next one is gonna be a little bit much, so I'm gonna walk through it step at a time. And here it is. Okay, we've got r equals three minus four cosine of two theta. So at this point, you just plug in zero for theta, pi six for theta, pi third, and so on. Now, if you just look quickly at the table, you'll notice it repeats. That is what typically gives us kind of the clover leaf look. And I tried to color coat. However, I ran out of colors and we ended up with kind of a neon color for the connecting the dots. So plugging in zero, three minus four cosine of two times zero. Cosine of zero is one. So three minus four is negative one. Next one, three minus four cosine of two times pi six, right? We're jumping by pi six. 2 6 is 1 third, and cosine of pi thirds is half. 3 minus 4 half is 3 minus 2, which is 1. Continuing, and I'm only going to do up to the orange point, and then it's going to repeat, right? If, or, sorry, the, yeah, correct, the orange point. And then it's going to repeat from what we have here. So hence the color coding, not trying to be confusing. 3 minus 4 cosine of 2 times pi thirds. So now we put pi thirds in. So 1, 0, 1, 6, 2, 6 is 1 third. 3, 6 will be half, right? And so 2 thirds, um, cosine of 2 thirds is negative half. So double negative. Negative 4 times negative half is plus 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. And that gives us this point, right? So I'm kind of graphing the points that it kind of loops under and goes through. And now green um, is the point we just did. Next, we'll get to the black point here. 3 minus 4 cosine of 2 times pi half. Well, 2 half is whole. Cosine of pi is negative 1. So 3 minus 4 times negative 1 becomes a plus 4. 3 plus 4 is 7. And now the numbers will start going down because negative 1 times negative 4 is going to be the highest value that'll be. 3 minus 4 cosine of 2 times 2 pi thirds, which is 4 thirds pi. 4 thirds pi on your normal graph, and somewhere here, I think, is going to be um, 1 half, negative half. So 3 minus 4 times negative half plus 2, 3 plus 2 is 5. Going down to positive half for 
5 pi 6, which is 5 pi thirds. 3 minus 2 is 1. And then this gets us back to the original 3 minus 4 cosine of 2 pi. 3 minus 4 times 1 is negative 1. And so that was only half the graph, right? That was this point, this point, green, black, purple, orange, and then it rotated to blue. Because then we were going this direction, but we got minus 1. And so it gives us this clover leaf look. And then that's going to continue and rotate down for the second leaf. So we have four, two small leaves, two large leaves. And again, this would be homework, but not quiz or test it on. This part will be tested on. So big red flag, big note. Testing for symmetry given that graph. And now we can basically eliminate most of the stuff. But if we're um, being symmetric about the line, theta is pi half, and again, so what's theta is pi half? This line up and down here. Normally we look at it as our y um, axis, but we aren't using y and x. So it's like, that would be that symmetry. How would that be symmetric? Well, if we can flip our r and, and um, theta values, then that's what we're gonna do. So what we do is we plug in negative r and negative theta, see if it's equal to the original. If it is not, then it's not symmetric. Next one, if we're checking if it's symmetric to the polar axis. And again, just going back, polar axis is this one right here. So that is kind of your um, x axis per se. Um, and so in this case, we would have r theta, you plug in r negative theta. Now don't forget, cosine eats the negatives, sines will move the negative to the front. And then lastly, and again, notice I'm skipping some of those because those wouldn't be something we could simplify easily. These are the ones that are easy that I've underlined. Maybe we should have circled or boxed in red. But those are the ones we need to remember, and that's what we'll do. And again, basically think about it. What could we substitute for r theta? Well, one's negative, one's positive. Those are these two options, or both negative. So we cover all three options. We were symmetric about the pole. This is the equivalent of the origin. Basically, you just flip your R value. And so looking at these equations, okay, I did the math already, right? If we were symmetric here, we'd plug in negative for both. So negative R, negative theta. Cosine of negative theta, the negative sign is E. So I basically cross this out. and We get negative R equals 10 plus 4 cosine of theta does not match, right, because of the minus R. So if that's the case, we are not symmetric, right, if there's no match. R equals negative theta, sorry, R negative theta, that's what we're plugging in. So this is going to stay positive this time, this one's negative. So R equals 10 plus 4 cosine of negative, the negative gets eaten by cosine, because cosine is an um, even function like that, and we get the match. So there's our match, because it matches, we are symmetric about the polar axis. This last one won't work because basically we're flipping the left but not the right. The right's going to look the same, but the left is not going to match, right? So that's our quickest sub because typically we are in terms of r equals. On the next side, same idea, plugging in negative for both. Negative on the left, negative theta is on the right. The cosine one will cancel because the eaten is how I like to say it, right? Even eats the sine, odd throws it out front. So this cosecant of negative theta becomes negative to cosecant of theta. And the cosine ate its sine, so we didn't have a double negative. Oh, these two will cancel, and we'll get r equals 2 cosecant of theta, and they're going to match. So we'll be symmetric at theta is pi half. The next one, we're doing the same idea on the right. The left doesn't have the negative, right? We're doing the same thing. They're both negative. Cosine eats it. Cosecant throws it in the front. So we get not a match, right? Opposite of what we started with. No match, not symmetric at the polar. And the last one, you just plug the negative R in on the left. Negative R theta is your substitute. And doesn't match, right? So not match at full. Now that is going to be um, the majority of the lesson. We finish here with graph using a graphing utility. Now Desmos can do this. It's a little complicated, so I'm going to pull it up. Sorry, my, my window doesn't match, so I'll try to get it to match my recording window. Um, and how I did this is you need to click on this graph settings, and I clicked on which one I want. So if you click on the grid, you get to click. If you click on the 
um, the circle one, that's polar, that's what we want. Um, I give this nice and labeled for us, so I left it like that. Now you, I switch it from radians to degrees, and then we're good to go. Now here's the other complicated thing. It's not horribly complicated, but to put in this equation, right, I'll show you one more time, I did R equals, and instead of typing it in, I needed to go to functions. So for function, <laughs> sine, and now theta. I did not see a theta. So you got to go to your ABCs, and theta is right below P. So four sine of theta, close parentheses, which usually with this, you just need to um, slide it over. So I press right, right. And now I'm doing my cosine. So then I go back to functions, cosine of theta squared. And so you're going to have to put theta in again, and we kind of have to insert the square afterwards. So right now, looks like a pretty interesting graph, but we haven't squared it yet. So now we have that over there, and I'm going to go back right after cosine, I'm going to square. So that's how it looked, and that's how our graph's going to look. Now, if I just clicked on my first one, my first one was already done, it was red, so yep, should match. Um, but then you usually just want to zoom in, and it basically looked like a bow on a present. Um, I believe it even touches at the point there, but we don't need to get too zoomed. But in general, just draw the graph. It goes about as far as 1.5 for ring, and comes back in. Nice and neat. Um, so if you have any homework like that, you can do this also on your calculator. I believe it's under mode. Um, you still want to be in radians, but um, the calculator can be in, um, you can set your graphing to parametric, polar, um, some of those we've already done. Um, and so you may want to get into that. Um, and I will try to copy um, something onto Google Classroom so you can see that better. Um, so you can see the directions for how to do this on your own calculator. But it works fairly well on a TI as well as in Desmos, as you see right there. And that is the end of this lesson. Um, again, if you have any questions, I know it's kind of a complicated lesson. However, um, the homework's not too bad um, in terms of length and um, will not be tested on.